to the channel and in this video I'm going to show you how trace route works but before that just subscribe to my channel so that I can bring you these videos on regular basis for you all right so trace route uh, like its name suggests it traces a route and what uh, I mean for what it traces a route it basically traces a route of an IP packet over the IP network so any packet going over the internet uh, basically trace route traces the complete route of that packet to and fro yeah so let's I mean before we begin let's do a man for trace route trace route so you can see prints the route packet trace to the network uh, this is a basically a definition then a little detailed definition trace route tracks the route packet from IP network on the way to a given host utilizes IP protocol that means it works on layer 3 uh, then it says it utilizes IP protocols time to live so TTL so it uses TTL so any packet on the network uh, any IP packet has a field called TTL so that it doesn't uh, goes around in the network uh, like forever that is why the TTL is there so any IP packet when it passes over a hop a hop is basically can be a router any router or any machine the TTL gets decreased by one that is why uh, any TTL set for an IP packet when it reaches zero the, pa the packet is discarded so that is how the TTL works all right so this is the message which you get when your TTL reaches zero ICMP time exceed and yeah so for IPv6 there's a application called traceroute 6 let's go down and we'll see what options are available to run this so since it's in layer 3 protocol what you need I mean in a nutshell you just need an IP of a destination host to trace route but there are a bunch of op other options you can just go over them uh, there's one option which we are going to use is this one hyphen n so this basically disables the DNS resolution so any IP uh, a packet goes over uh, it, it basically disables the DNS resolution all right now let's just exit out of this and let's do a trace route so trace route hyphen n and I'm going to do the trace route to a very popular uh, DNS server called Cloudflare. You can do the same for Google DNS, like 8.8.8.8. So I'll show you that as well. All right. So let's do that. And you can see it hardly took any time. And you can see what all hops your packet has gone through. So 10.0. Dot two dot two then one nine eight one six one nine two one six eight one dot one then this is some routers IP these are public IPs you can see and and there's bunch of information over here as well right so you can see hops was set to thirty and packet size was set to sixty byte now let's see what happens actually behind the scene all right so uh, so there are two way actually the trace route works. One is theoretically, and the other is what the practical application is. The trace route is uh, basically implemented. So, like this packet had thirty hops, right? So, how the trace route works is basically every time the packet crosses a hop or a router or any machine, the TTL gets decreased by one, right? So suppose it goes to router 1, the TTL goes to 29, it started with 30 hops, right? The TTL goes to 29, then it crosses another machine, TTL goes to 28, then it crosses another machine, the TTL goes to 27 and so on. And likewise, the router which receives the packet with TTL of 1 and still the destination is not reached, basically what it does, it, it, result, it basically returns a TTL time exceed message to the desk uh, to the source right and along with that message it uh, packs up uh, around 28 bytes uh, i'm not sure yeah so somewhere around 28 bytes of the original header so it returns 
uh, it discards the packet once it uh, receives a TTL of 1 and then responds to the original host or the source of the packet with the 28 bytes of the original header and in that header it basically puts in its information like its IP right what you see over here these IPs these IPs are basically coming from that but if traceroute would have worked that way you would have only got the response from the IP or the router which was the last which basically received the packet with TTL of 1 right but here you see that you get the IP of each hop each hop right so how traceroute makes it work is basically it starts with a TTL of 1 right so when it starts with the TTL of 1 and sends out the packet so this packet goes to say gateway gateway what it does it it does TTL minus 1 so TTL becomes 0 and then its responses response is TTL time XC right XC message right so with this message the gateway sends its IP also so when the source uh, machine receives this uh, response it and it basically unwraps the packet and sees that the IP which it had got is not the destination IP what it does it it increases the TTL to 2 right and then repeats the same process in the similar way in the similar way then it goes to TTL of 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and so on till 30 right but this is if the destination is not reached in 30 uh, 30 hops what if you reach the destination in the sixth hop right then how would your uh, machine would know that it has reached the destination so in this uh, to basically identify the destination it's actually doing something interesting so what it does it it creates a UDP packet or UDP payload or UDP probe to send out and what inside that UDP probe it does is it basically I mean it has the IP packet plus it has a UDP uh, random ports uh, these ports can be between the range of 33 434 to 33 534 I think I am not sure so basically it packs the packet with this port or rather you can say that it uh, along with the destination IP it says it sets a destination port as well and that port is just a random port so once your packet reaches uh, the destination the message which you get in response is not TTL time exceed but rather port unreachable and that is bound to happen because the what traceroute does is it, it has basically packed some random UDP port and those port I mean which are like 100% not be open or won't be running any service to return right so that is why you get the destination uh, port unreachable method and when you get that uh, message in your response you know that you have reached your destination the best way to see this is either using Wireshark so I don't have Wireshark right now otherwise I would have shown you or you could just take a TCP dump uh, on your system probably divide the screen into run TCP dump on one screen and run trace route on another screen so you would see uh, what all I mean what all TTL is being sent in your packet or what is the response what is the random port being set you so you will see all that information uh, let's do a trace route again and there's one thing I wanted to talk about 1.1.1.1 dot one dot one dot one. so you see the there are three timestamps basically in milliseconds so a trace route what does it what it does is by default it sends out three probes and these times are basically the time of complete uh, journey from source to destination I mean to and fro so this time is basically the time for complete journey or, or it's called the I think uh, roundabout time yeah so it's a roundabout time for the complete journey and since it sends out three probes there are three times for all the three probes right 
now so this was one form of uh, trace route so this was udp trace route so trace route is basically of three types uh, udp trace route which is the default trace route there's an icmp trace route and there's a third type of trace route which you would normally not use uh, is the tcp trace route so we won't be talking about tcp trace route so i would be now showing you the icmp trace route and how it is different so let's do a normal trace route to google dns right and probably every time the seventh server does not respond yes so this is basically this particular hop does not respond to this type of traffic which is basically udp traffic right now if i change this trace route hyphen i hyphen n 8.8.8.8 so you can see i got a response from all the servers here the seventh server server just didn't respond with anything because it probably is not uh, able to respond to this type of UDP traffic but here we made an ICMP request which is basically a request response protocol right so you send out an ICMP request and you get back an ICMP uh, response right so this ICMP basically works uh, in the same way as UDP so you get a TTL time exceed if your destination is not reached uh, if your destination is reached you get a basically ICMP echo message so when you get an ICMP echo, you know that you have reached your destination. But you can see that this server, which was the seventh hop, is responding to ICMP traffic. Because we didn't have any random ports, any UDP packet, it was just a request response protocol. That is why it has responded. So most of the time I traced out the ICMP one is the one which you would see people using. In fact, I also use the trace route with the ICMP. Uh, in it because that gives you the complete information about the basically the path your uh, packet has traveled all right i think this is it for this video guide this was just an ad hoc video like i told you that we would be doing some ad hoc videos in between talking about different technologies so this was just one of those videos i hope you like this subscribe to the channel and keep rocking